Yes, yes, people. Matthew GS UK here. Hope everyone's doing well. Today we are 29th of September 2024, currently 5.20pm. This is going to be episode 11 of the 5.13.62 EMA strategy. Uh, let's dive straight into this. Another killer week, not going to lie. Did take a nail on US 30, so we're going to be going over that. Going to be also looking at Bitcoin. We're going to be looking at some Forex other indices pairs and we're also going to be looking at gold so the first post i put up from last week was the 513 ema crossover on bitcoin and this was a great trade that i caught so let's just jump straight into bitcoin but before we do anything let me just put this vertical line on for the start of the week so from monday so we are starting here a bit slow to start wasn't in any of these trades price started to drop down slightly here wasn't really interested in that looking for that bullish move because we are above the 62 ema and then i got the alert for the 5 and the 13 ema crossover so if we just go to our alerts over here, as you can see, we've got the Bitcoin 5.13 EMA crossover on the four hour time frame that went off. And as that went off, I just took a look and saw that this was starting to go bullish. So as you can see here, it started to go bullish. So went in for a buy stop loss not below the low did it a bit tighter this time and yeah was in some good profits so decided to share that one take profit just above this high up here and as you can see tp1 was smashed we went above this high and then the twin trade was left open so managed to catch the remaining the remaining candles or well, the remaining push up for bitcoin so really happy with bitcoin in the end that was a great trade to catch now you might notice that there's something slightly different with this indicator so i decided to this is what i've had before actually when i first installed this indicator and i think it comes as the default there's a color that's kind of colored in here just to make it a bit easier to show you when it's bullish and when it's bearish. So I've currently got in between the 5 EMA, which is the yellow, and the 13 EMA, which is the green. I've got a kind of like a, a lightish blue color just to help me identify that we are bullish and really should we should only be really looking for buys. And then when it switches over and we are going bearish, I've just changed the color now to yellow just to signify that the trade has flipped now and we are going bearish so as you can see we are in this yellow period here so we really should only be looking for sells and another safe option is i've i've added this to the to my trade plan but for the advanced ones for for something advanced you could take the sell when you sell in high, but the safer option is actually to wait for the 5 and the 13 EMA to cross over and then look for the sells. This is more high risk up here. Uh, I do take some high risk trades and I'll go over a high risk trade that I took for gold shortly. But the safer option is just to wait for the 5 and the 13 EMA to cross over and then look for sells in this, in this example here and to do this if you go to the 51362 clouds indicator we go to settings i don't know why that's doing that settings okay it just took a while to load so it's this here plots background so if you tick this i've got mine set up in this blue here and then I've got the opacity set to this. Obviously, you can set it however you want. 
but a good thing would be to use the same colors as myself because it'd just be easier to follow follow along and it'd just be easier to train your eyes looking for the same things as myself so yeah gonna be testing this out again with the with the colors looks pretty cool as well with the dark theme background so yeah bitcoin was great another cool thing i want to show you guys is if we no if we open uh this here settings here and then you can invert scale and then this is what it looks like obviously inverted so wherever you look wherever you take for the buy you can flip it and then you can train your eyes to look for the same thing for the cell. So for example, this is the same thing, the five and the 13 EMA, EMA is crossed over and then you sell. And then obviously if we invert that back, five and the 13 has crossed over, so then we can buy. Cool. So moving on now to what we now on us 30 so i did actually take a loss on us 30 it did actually end up taking my hitting my stop loss i did place a sell limit price was broke structure i was anticipating price to come back up which it did and then i was kind of looking for a sell-off on us 30 however that didn't play out so I took a nail on that one and I will just show you US 30 what actually happened. So price broke structure. I was expecting it to come back up to this last up down, up candle before this down move. Because this candle, as you can see, actually captured liquidity. So I thought the market would come back up, mitigate out their positions and then be a nice sell off. But it didn't happen the reason why there was this big old move on friday there was a lot of news that come out and it was positive so this is why we got this massive bearish move i didn't actually catch this because i was anticipating the sell i didn't go in for the buy however moving forward really i should have gone for the for the buy because we are above the 62 EMA, the 5 and the 13 EMA crossed over and there was a lot of news. So you can look back, you can always improve. But yeah, I took an L on this one. Just want to be transparent and say that I don't win all the trades. Like I do lose some trades. So yeah, US 30 was a, was a loss. And also just another update. I have changed all the... All the pairs are now showing FP markets. So you can see here on the left hand side, can you see how the broker is now FP markets for every single one? So FP markets is obviously my broker. So as is my broker, I want to see my broker's data. It's very important that whatever data you're looking at for your broker, whoever that may be, you want to be looking at their data because is going to be slightly different. Like I think I showed you in the last one. If you looked at say IC markets and then you looked at FP markets for US 30, you will notice that the it's slightly different, very similar, but slightly different data. So it is very important. And then the same thing for the metals. So this is all the FP markets metals. This is the only metals you can trade with. As you can see, this is all FP markets now. And same for crypto. This is all the crypto you can trade with FP markets. So pretty cool that I've done this now. Got this all set up on my phone as well. My C Trader app. Everything is saved and it's all showing the same broker. What I want to share with you is one thing I did notice on some pairs, for example, like gold with FP markets. When I was looking at gold with FP markets, and then when I was looking at C Trader for FP markets, I noticed that although they were the same broker on different platforms, the data was slightly different. I did actually message support and I asked them like, why is the data slightly different? Because 
really it shouldn't be because they're exactly the same broker and they said because it's different platforms this is why you're seeing slightly different data uh i did notice it more on the metals like gold and platinum more than anything bitcoin looked all right forex looked all right it was just it was just the metals and they just said it was to do with the platforms however i noticed just now because i wanted to show you that example with like gold so this is this is my c trader platform it it was quite noticeable that it was very different like there was there was like a a mini manipulation candle on platinum i believe but then when you looked at trading view there wasn't a manipulation candle uh when i say manipulation candle it's kind of like this kind of thing here where price is like it's like like a liquidity sweep and platinum was very it stood out a lot recently in the data on on um c trader but when i looked at trading view that manipulation candle was not there and i was like well that's a bit weird they're the same broker so i was like i need to be careful of this because i'm looking at two different data even that's the same broker anyways today that manipulation candle that i saw and noticed on gold being slightly different it looks like it's exactly the same now it looks like the data is exactly the same on trading view as it is c trader so i don't know if it's because i said something that they looked at it and i was like oh the data is should not be like this and they've updated it i don't know what they've done but it looks like it's now exactly the same on c trader and trading view so i will have to keep my eye on that moving forward but it's all positive because that's what we want. We want to be seeing the same data uh, with the same broker on two different platforms. So, so far, so good. We've got the same data now. And yeah, we can have a little quick, quick flick through my C Trader. So on C Trader, these are my moving averages that I've got. To add the moving averages, you just come up to here and then we go to trend exponential moving average you can just add three of those and then it's the same setup basically you want the 5 13 and the 62 same colors and then i've actually downloaded the Heikinashi candles from click algo because i don't think you can get the Heikinashi candles straight off the bat off the c trader platform you can on the app actually but i couldn't see it on the c trader desktop version so anyways if you want to go ahead and download the click algo i would recommend it for this strategy and then as you can see i've just got all my pairs up here and that's pretty much it to be honest with you whatever i see on trading view i then obviously go and place the trades on c trader okay so moving now on to euro usd i'm not a fan with trading forex i'm going to be honest with you like i remember when i first started trading uh the the financial markets and i was trading forex i just it, although i was new and i was learning it forex was yeah it can be quite volatile and what was annoying was you get a lot of news throughout the day i mean news is 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 what it is it's always going to be there however there's i don't know i just i just never really got on with with forex like indices is a lot cleaner to trade and i thought you know what i'm just going to start trading some some forex just concentrating on the majors so the majors are the euro usd gbp usd us dollar cad uh there's around six of them and i can't remember what the rest of them are if i'm going to be honest, honest with you there's only a few majors but yeah i will list the majors for you but i only concentrate really on eu and and gu and as you can see this is looking quite good with this strategy so we had a 
Nice bounce off the 62 EMA. Could have gone in for a buy. Bounce off the 62 EMA here. Another buy. And then had a buy, uh, buy opportunity again here. So Forex is looking pretty good. But I what did I do now? I... Yeah, I just took a high risk trade, if I'm being honest, honest with you. I was like, this may be a good sell off opportunity. So, the price actually, it broke structure, it's come up, it's filled in balance. And then my alert went off. We've had the five and the 13 email crossover happen here. So, I thought I'm going in for a sell. I went in for a sell. I was in profit. It very nearly hit my take profit. However, I believe because of news, this just reversed on me and ended up taking an L. Yeah, as you can see, price was so close to hitting my take profit. And then, yeah, it just reversed. But I was break even in the end on that one. I think I was break even on the first trade anyway. Not too sure on the other ones. So that was EU. Moving now on to Bitcoin. Okay, yeah, so that was just the update. Like TP1 was hit for Bitcoin. And then finally on gold on the Friday, this was a higher risk trade. And the reason why I say it's higher risk is because... Although we are selling high, price could still carry on. So, for example, if we was in this situation here and you go to sell, you would have been taken out because this carried on going higher. So it's always higher risk to take these kind of trades. However, I was a bit confident because we do have, or we did have, imbalance that needed to be filled here so it had a target to hit so we had the whole flip i've gone in for a sell didn't have the 5 and the 13 ema crossover as of yet but i did sell anyway calculated my risk gone in for a sell and then this candle was beautiful it was in a lot of tra a lot of profit tp1 was hit as you can see, this is filled in all the imbalance. And then TP2, or I say the twin trade, was left open. And I ended up closing around this box of the imbalance fill because it was coming to the close of play. And I don't really like to keep my trades open over the weekend. So I had a nice, nice win for, for gold. I am anticipating gold to carry on selling off uh this will be my next target uh where are we next target is this last down candle before this up move so i expect price to at least come down to this area uh it, it might bounce off it it might carry on going down so i'll be looking for sells next week hopefully we get a liquidity grab and then price carries on down so i'll be looking to get in on that liquidity grab before the market carries on moving down but we will see what happens i uh, just want to show you an example so for example see this here price is moved up we get the pullback and then we got this massive move up so if we just invert this, price has come down, price has come up. So we're looking for a sell and then prices tank down. So that's what I'll be looking for. I'll be looking for a liquidity grab and then getting in on the sells. And I believe that was it for the trades posted in trade masters just seeing what else we needed to cover 
Yeah, I've noticed that some other indices are looking quite good, to be fair. So I'm going to be keeping my eyes on these for next week. So, for example, the Italy 40 is looking quite good with this strategy. We had a nice few touches on the 62 EMA before this absolutely took off. So that would have been a beautiful buy to catch there. And then on the way down, prices broke this these five thirteen sixty two EMA. Prices come up here, and it's actually tapped the sixty two EMA. It can't close above it, and it's rejecting. So this has been great to sell here and catch this insane move down here. Like that's that would have been great to catch that that move and also with the commodities with oil this would have been another great trade to catch for the sales so this is the kind of thing i'll be looking for you want to really wait until price comes back up you get the alert go off on the 13 ema and then you sell actually it would have gone off twice um Sold there, could have sold there, sold there, sold there. Buy opportunity, could have bought here. I know we're still under the 62 EMA. So, but we did have the 513 EMA crossover. So who knows? We are not on that opportunity now where we could potentially sell here. However, price could come up and hit the 62 EMA and then carry on selling down. So we'll be keeping my eye on uh, on this for next week. Uh, okay, that's just the alert I done from last week. We can delete this. So yeah, it's all looking good. I will be doing video as well on the lower time frames because I know that there's a few scalpers that watch watch these videos and they can be a bit more impatient and they want to have trades happening faster than waiting on the four hour time frame but that's why i like to spread my alerts across all the markets so when the opportunity arises where we are consistently we are consistently notified when these opportunities arise across all the markets so that's why i like to spread it all out but however, I will be doing the lower time frames and just moving on now to the markets news for next week. So a little quick look. Monday, depending on obviously what you trade. Like, what is this one here? China. So if you was to trade just quickly go to this and I'll just show you. There's this one here. China A50 index cash. So any alerts to do with China, any news alerts, sorry, then you want to be paying attention to the news events for China. Like this is looking quite good that like, imagine catching that wow absolute rocket so china china news if you're trading the china indices like you'll be interested in the china news right so monday there's high impact news for china so if you're wanting to trade the china indices then you'll be interested in finding out what's happening here like this could potentially cause a massive sell-off so this is why it's always good to have a quick look at this high impact news for germany and then this is all low germany low tuesday 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 this is all high impact news gbp euro like if you're trading forex euro usd this is definitely going to move the markets like straight off the bat euro again high impact news 
US dollar. And uh, moving on to Wednesday. Wednesday, Wednesday, US dollar again. Thursday. And then moving on to Friday. And I'm not going to mess up this time because we're now in October and the first Friday of the month is NFP, non-farm payrolls. So this is really going to move the markets. Friday is looking very, very good for this. Lots of pips to be made on Fridays. Fridays is normally a quiet day to trade, but recently it's like been quite hectic really like some had some massive moves and this friday coming is going to be another another good one so yeah watch out for friday there can be a lot of pips to be made to be caught and it's going to be another another great week as of always with the stock market news i will be posted on monday or tuesday what's happening throughout the week Telegram is always free for our group, which is Trade Masters. Link to join that will be in the description. My broker is FP Markets. We get to trade, trade any lot size on any market. And yeah, I really like FP Markets. Like it's just a such a cool broker. Really happy with them. Like just everything about it. The customer service is great. Like and also as well with FP Markets. This is like one of the only brokers. I mean, there was another broker that did it, to be fair, but they had a very nice introduction call with myself. You don't have to take a call from them. They do send you an email otherwise, but there was like any help you need, just let us know. Uh, and I asked some, asked some questions on the phone and they told me the answers that I needed to know like straight away. Like very friendly, very helpful. They're not pushy. So yeah, FP Markets is great. I will be doing a video on how to set up the broker with with obviously using FP Markets and C Trader and all that good stuff, just so you don't have to figure that out for yourself. And then I am affiliated with TradingView. So I'm on the basic package at the moment. I now get the 20 free alerts. B, remember that with the alerts, you have to set the expiry date for two months time. So by default, the alert is set to one month and then I don't think you get notified that it's expired. So you just have to keep on top of that. So once you've set your alerts, set them to expire for two months, set a calendar reminder on your phone to, you know, amend your alerts for another two months. But apart from that, Trading view is is great for these alerts and trading this system. Already gone off the the market news. I'm now going to sign off. I appreciate you watching this video. Please subscribe to the channel for more videos like this. It helps the channel grow and it just shows me that you're liking this content and you want more of it. Hope you have a great week trading the markets and I will see you in the next one. Goodbye.